Let us offer our consecration to the Lord. Lord, we offer up to you this day, and we ask that you answer our prayers in ways that glorify your name. We ask that we may serve you in all that we do. We ask that we may be docile to your grace and docile to where you are leading us so that we may glorify your name, we may serve you, and let others know of your greatness. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Well, today is, of course, Monday. It's the 23rd of May, and it is the Monday of the sixth week of uh, Easter. So during this week here in the New England areas, we will be celebrating Ascension Thursday, which obviously comes up on Thursday. (laughs) Uh, In other dioceses, they celebrate it on Sunday, so... Uh, and so that's going on. And, and one of the other things we're going to look at is what our readings are talking to us about today. And the interesting thing about our readings is that we see these powerful words of what Jesus is calling us to do. And so in these words, we see that the advocate will come. And we've heard this from from uh, Alfred Mirror on our other program. The advocate will come whom I will send from the Father. So that's interesting that you look at that word connection there, whom I will send you from the Father when the advocate comes. Now, Alfred Mira points out that gives us two advocates, Jesus, and we know that from 1 John. Jesus is always advocating for us, and then the Spirit of Truth, who is the other advocate, who is guiding us and leading us to know the truth. So, Jesus represents us to the Father, but the Spirit of Truth is guiding us and leading us. Now, here's an interesting thing to think of. If we're following the Spirit of Truth— And we have to follow the spirit of truth because the spirit is the spirit of truth and he's guiding us to all truth. Then we don't have truth ourselves. We are finding truth through Christ and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. That means we have to allow ourselves to be challenged by the things that go on in the world to have faith in the Lord that he is guiding us. And in doing so, we have to realize there are times that we may have to experience a challenge because we don't understand the truth yet because the the spirit is leading us in truth we don't have it the spirit is leading us in truth and jesus is the truth so how do we understand this well i want you to look at it this way uh in the early days of the church it's in the acts of the apostles we talked about earlier we have peter who is challenged on what he can eat and he says no i'm not going to eat anything that is not clean and the Spirit is leading him to understand that that covenant that um, ordered you could only eat those things that are clean is over now. And now we're opening up a new door. Well, that requires you to allow yourself to be challenged. That requires you to allow yourself to trust in the Holy Spirit, number one, and trust that you will be challenged, number two, and when it happens, to trust that the Spirit is, in fact, working with you. And one of the ways you can do that is always be people of prayer. If you ever find yourself going someplace that maybe you don't want to be, but maybe circumstances are that you are finding yourself walking down a path or or with others who are walking down a path that you trust, but you feel a little uncomfortable and you're deciding whether or not you should do this, well, what you, one of the things you want to do is always be people of prayer anyway. That's what St. Paul says. But also bring that in your prayer. Say, for example, well, why don't I just throw something out? Say, for example, you're being called to a charismatic prayer meeting. You've never been to one. Now, does the church recognize the charismatic renewal? Yes, it does. Now, ironically, there's this great separation. I know there are some people that are listening. The great separation where there are people that embrace the charismatic renewal and there are people that reject it. And so there's this great separation that is there. And so there may be people listening say, wait, wait, now hold on. I'm going to speak to you about what the church actually teaches. Now, whether or not you embrace the charismatic renewal is a whole different story, but does the church recognize it? Yes, it does. 
or yes, she does. We use the female pronoun with the church. Yes, she does. So I'm speaking from that perspective. So say you're invited to a charismatic prayer meeting uh, and you feel very uncomfortable there. Well, be aware of that, but bring that to your prayer. Say for, say, for example, you're coming with a group of people. It's never a good idea to go anywhere with just one person who you don't know that well. So you say you're going with a group of people, some of whom you know well, some of whom, you know, you it, just like any other group. And you're with a group of people, but you're not the driver. So you, you're going, you're uncomfortable with going, you're comfortable with the people you are with, but you're uncomfortable aware they are going and they're going to a charismatic prayer meeting. You know, that's where your prayer comes in. Always bring your prayer in to say, Lord, you have to guide me here. You have to lead me. And to trust in the guidance of the Holy Spirit. But that's where you need your prayer. So you see that example. So trust in the Lord, but you do that by praying. But know that the Lord is going to challenge you at times. Now, you never want to do anything that you know for a fact is not church teaching, um, or that is leading you down a path that you feel is not church teaching. But you do want to understand where the Lord is leading you, and that's where prayer is so essential. That w- That's where prayer is so important. So prayer is essential for all of us, at, you know, as, mo- as much as possible, not like saying the Our Father constantly, but saying, Lord, be with me during this time. We're going to talk more on the other side of the break. You're listening to St. Anthony overnight from St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. We'll be right back. I want to call your attention to Catholic TV, which offers great faith-filled, family-friendly programming 24 hours a day. You can find your cable channel at www.getcatholictv.com, and you can watch online on the free apps or check out the YouTube channel. Daily Mass, Rosaries, the Divine Mercy Chaplet, and the Our Lady of Perpetual Help Novena are all available online and on demand. Check out CatholicTV.com. And don't forget our own website. That's CatholicAudioMedia.com, which will lead you to not only to be able to leave feedback and everything else, also lead you to come visit our church. Remember, you have a standing invitation to visit our 10 o'clock a.m. Mass on Sundays at 43 Holton Street in Alston, Massachusetts. So feel free and uh, come by and come to Mass and experience Mass with us. And if, you, and if you do, let me know. Say, hey, you know, I listen to you on the radio. I, people have done that. And uh, I enjoy that. And, you know, I thought I'd come by and experience the parish. Someone spoke to me one time. It ha- actually, it's happened to me several times. I say, are you on the radio? Yes. Yes, I am. Well, now you found the church. So there you go. Now, one of the reasons why I bring that up is there's something interesting that that happened. Let me read you this. This is from Reddit, from the Catholicism subreddit on Reddit. It says, I feel so discouraged with our current world in regards to redefining marriage, redefining gender, etc. It's hard to stay hopeful when I feel things will just get worse. We'll talk about that. Fatima predicted that the final battle between God and the evil one will be over marriage and the family. We'll talk about that. How do we fight these ideologies? How can we win this battle? So my response to that was really simple. And it was this. How do we fight these ideologies? We don't. Stay faithful, stay rooted in prayer, stay close to the sacraments, and live a Catholic life. What you are watching happen exactly is exactly what would happen if what we believe is true. You're watching the effects of original sin proving we cannot live without God. So the battle begins with your pursuit of holiness. Then live that as signs of what we believe is true. Finally, read Romans 1. Many misinterpret it. It's about how humans abandon God and practice idolatry. The fruit of it is what you see. And you, you see, I'm pointing out there that it's kind of like people are saying, well, how do we know God exists? And they're looking for special proofs and proofs they're looking for, you know, if, if, if one of the classics, you know, um, if God exists, then he can strike me right now dead. And see, I told you it wasn't going to happen. Well, you're running on the assumption that God wants to strike you dead. (laughs) And if he doesn't, it's not going to happen. But what we're actually watching is more a scientific experiment. If what we believe is true, 
a certain things are, are going to happen. Those things are happening, therefore, what we believe is true. And that's the whole world turning away from God and following down a different path. Now, one of the things to always keep in mind, and this is essential, is remember this, what is the source, uh, what is the greatest source of evil? The greatest source of evil is Catholics not living their faith. There was a, a bishop who tweeted, and you know my position on bishops tweeting, basically they shouldn't, um, and I do very little tweeting, priests too, uh, because they tend to do things that really cause trouble. And after the shooting in Buffalo, which was a horrible thing, uh, one of the things that uh, this bishop wrote is, racism isn't the real problem, atheism is. Okay, uh, please do us a favor and get away from Twitter, because it really wasn't a a, a good uh, statement. You see, the saint said the real problem, if you want to know the source of evil, it's Catholics not living their faith. Atheism is caused by what? Catholics not living their faith. But if you know your faith, and if you know your faith well, then you will say, you know what? All that we're witnessing right now is proof of what we believe. That's that's the whole thing. Now, uh, before you start pointing to all these other people, say, what is it that we as church are not doing, do you, want, do you want a list, are not doing that would help people to believe? You see that? And that's where we begin. That's how, how it needs to be. As far as everything else, do keep in mind that St. Lucy did say the final battle was going to be over marriage and the family, but that wasn't said publicly in Fatima that I know of. That was said later. Anyway, we will talk tomorrow. Have yourself a blessed day. If you would like to support our program, please consider a donation to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts. There are several ways to consider this. One is to purchase any of our merchandise, which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. That's catholicaudiomedia.com. There are coffee mugs there. There's also my latest book, Encounter Christ in Your Humanity, all of which you can find at the shopping tab at catholicaudiomedia.com. You can also donate to the show directly through either the Donate tab, also at catholicaudiomedia.com, or by sending a donation through the U.S. Postal Service with your questions and comments at 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. That's St. Anthony Parish, 43 Holton Street, Alston, Massachusetts, 02134. Finally, the best way you can support our parish is to attend Mass on Sundays at 10 o'clock and be a part of our parish. We thank you for any support you would like to give to St. Anthony Parish in Alston, Massachusetts, the sponsoring parish for this media outreach to Catholics and other Christians in the WROL, WEZE, and podcast listening audience. In Cristo vivimos.